Hey all, Heretic here, and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do a Battlegrounds quest reward tier list. Now, I've kicked around all of these a lot. I've had some people in chat ask me to make these, and I've always kind of held off on doing tier lists because one, well, if you look at hero tier lists, they're massive, and with so many heroes in Hearthstone Battlegrounds, we'd be here for far, far too long. With quests, Quest, we can do something a little different. We can go into something that's very important to every game, but get it done relatively quick. Let's take a dig in and see what we can come up with. Now, these are the quests that I like based on, you know, my play, my play style. Obviously, this can differ from yours. Certain heroes and play styles aren't going to mesh as well together with certain quests. So if I like quest X in hero Y, you might look at them and be like, this looks like crap. Luckily here, this is just going to be based on the quest, so we'll discuss each one and see what we think. Now, there are no quests I would call garbage. There are quests that in stream I typically refer to as not being there. If I pick D, that means I don't think you ever should play this thing. Let's take a look and see what we would do. These are all considering they're doable, but some of them by their nature just are typically very hard to accomplish, so that definitely influences whether or not I like them. Once again, this is my opinion, yours might differ. First, let's start with Snickersnack. Snickersnack is pretty simple. It's gonna trigger two battle cries a turn. Snickersnack, I'm never excited to see. I mean, maybe if there was a world I was playing Flurgle actively in, I would be like, oh my God, yes, I love this. But even then, I'm just not loving it. Snickersnack is kind of a solid quest reward to me. It's not a bad one. It's not an exciting one but I do like it and I can see a world where it's definitely a fun one and a lot of play where I want to use it. Ghastly Mask. Ghastly Mask is usually pretty difficult to complete, but if it's even remotely, you know, completable, Ghastly Mask can give some really good rewards. There's a, it's just a lot of things can work good with this. Updeat Duo is probably the MVP. Walking Fort would probably be the other one I like the most. And this is probably the only way I want to play Light Fang is if I have a Ghastly Mask completed, but I'm not going to say it's S tier. If you can complete it really fast, in any quest from this list, except the D tier, really, if you can complete them in a turn, and even some of those D tier quests, you could complete them immediately. You can find value because you'll have the time to build out even the worst quest. But I'm going to say Ghastly Mask is a solid A. If you can complete this, definitely worth your time. Pretty good. Uh, Red Hand, it's a plus 12 buff, so it's significant. Plus 12, plus 12 is nothing to sneeze at. I per my primarily prefer using this with buffing triples or mechs. I feel like that is the best use for it, but you can get a lot of tempo now, especially where Murlocs are buffing a lot in the hand. So its values come up a lot from the first quest meta just because the way the meta's changed. But for me, at least, it's still a C. I mean, I'll play it, and with certain tribes, I really like it. But with other lobbies, I don't want this at all. So I'm gonna say it's a C. It's kind of situationally good. It definitely has its place, but eh. Friends Along the Way is one I actually like quite a bit. Now, is it S tier? No, it's not at all. But what it is, it is its direction. If you're picking this with a hero that can even make any use out of the tribe it's offering, if the tribe is good in the lobby you're in, then it'd be silly not to take Friends Along the Way as it's very simple and clear direction. Especially at lower MMRs where you might struggle and you're not sure what to do. Take friends along the way. If it's saying play Murlocs, well, guess what? Play Murlocs and go nuts. I'm going to put it in a solid B. I think it's very playable, but it, once again, it's kind of situational, but it's not as bad as Red Hand where, you know, you only want to use it on certain tribes. You can use friends along the way with anything. It just depends if the hero in the lobby work with what it's offering you. Yogtastic Tasties, I love. It is silly. It is fun, but... It is slow, so you don't want to try to complete it if it's going to have a long completion because you're not even going to get it the turn you complete it. It's not going to give it to you start to the start of your turn. And it's also very possible, let's face it, it can just screw you. It can roll, be like, hey, here's your randomness and I'm going to shuffle all your stats and I'm going to make the minion you were about to sell into 100 to 100 and now you're stuck with it. And the minion you wanted to keep is now a uh, 2-2. Two, two. Your buff slot, switch stats with that, and now you're screwed. So while I do love it, and it is a fun meme, and you just want to have a good time one, I'm going to say this is a C. It's, okay, I haven't really been offered anything super competitive, but I really enjoy playing it because it's fun and random. 
going Yogtastic Tasties. Tiny Henchman at the end of every turn is going to give three tier three or lower minions plus three plus three. Uh, this is kind of, to me, a crap quest reward. You need to complete this and get it on basically turn four for it to be valuable. And then the minion that it's buffing, you typically don't want to keep. I mean, maybe you're going to scour fin, you've got taunted and you're going to keep it forever. It's going to keep getting buffed. Deflecto bot is probably the MVP for something like this. But overall, I am never excited for tiny henchmen. But I mean, it, it used to at least be mildly fun, but I feel like in the current meta, it is way too slow and just doesn't do anything really meaningful for your job. So unless you can complete this thing in one, maybe two turns, I would ditch it. Victim Spectre is another edge case use. Victim Spectre is going to give you a copy plane of the last minion that died in your combat from your board. So think about this. If you're playing any kind of token board, if you're, you know, mechs, undead, there's chance you're going to get garbage from this. You're going to get things you don't want. If you're playing Murlocs, if you're playing Quillbore, you're playing Naga, there's a chance you're going to get something meaningful. So it really depends what you're playing. But typically, I'm not a huge fan of this. I felt like in the first quest, uh, it was much better, but versus the new quest and where the game is now, I don't feel like it's as good. I mean, maybe you never play Undead. Maybe you never play Max. So this can be situationally good for you. But for me, this isn't very good. I'm not gonna say it's D tier, but it almost always is for me. I'm gonna put it in C because there are situations where it can work, but it's tough. Next up is Anima Bribe. Anima Bribe is after you sell a minion, give its stats to a random minion in Bob's Tavern. Now, this is pretty cool depending on the hero you're playing. If you have a hero where you can move those stats around, you can get more value out of it. It's really neat. So definitely Anima Bribe, I'm going to say, is a solid B. Cookbook is often a trap. Cookbook is every time you buy a minion, you're going to give a permanent plus one, plus one to the next minion you buy, and it's accumulative and it stacks forever. So if you buy 80 minions, you're giving plus 80, plus 80. As you can see, if there's mechs in the lobby, if you're already playing an APM build, you can get really, really big with any kind of cycling. So I think Cookbook is pretty solid, but it is often very difficult to complete. But that being said, if you can complete this one, it is a very solid, consistent one for you, depending on the lobby, the hero, and the tribe, of course. Uh, Devil in the detail is kind of boring. It is going to eat random minions in the shop to buff your right and leftmost minion. It's usually not hard to complete, but it's usually not exciting and it's not a huge buff, but it's definitely worth taking if offered nothing better. Partners in Crime is interesting. It's going to give you a golden copy of your buddy. Partners in Crime is very consistent in that it also offers you a triple. So I'm going to say it's an A tier, but caveat is the hero, is that buddy good? It's all hard to say because everyone's completely different. Stolen Gold is going to make your left and right most minion gold. That's going to give you some real opportunity to abuse the shop and positioning where you're maneuvering minions around to get the most value. I really like Stolen Gold, but it's often very difficult to complete. So once again, it's just a solid one because of that difficulty. And it's, it's consistently hard to complete this one. So I'm going to put that as a B. Another hidden body. Okay, this one, there's a lot of Bs in here, folks. Is a B because of the animation time. They've never really fixed it. They did speed it up a hair from what it used to be. But if you can complete this on the regular, this really does hurt you if you're completing it in the shop phase. But if it's a combat completion where it's just happening in your combat and it's not eating up those animations during your shop phase, I like this one more. So it just depends you know, what it is and where it is. Wondrous Wisdom Ball is great. It is going to give you random results. You're going to shuffle it, and sometimes it's going to do nothing. Sometimes it's going to give you copies of your board. It's going to give you copies of utility. It's going to give you, you know, all better versions, all tier six versions. It's going to make random minions gold. Wondrous Wisdom Ball, if it can be completed, is very solid. And I'm not sure if it's an S or an A. I think it's pretty random, so I'm going to put it as an A. Alter Ego, pretty simple. It's going to give you every other turn. It's going to give plus seven, plus seven to the even in the odd cards in the shop. Pretty consistent. Not that exciting. You have to wait for it to go off. So I'm going to put it myself as a C. It is solid stats, but it's every other turn, which you do need to pay attention as you're freezing shops because you might want to freeze because next turn it's going to buff the right cards. 
then again, it might be buffing the wrong cards that makes you now not want to do that. So I'll do, you get to see it's playable. It's not garbage, but it's not exciting. Uh, Menagerie Mayhem, this doesn't exist. This isn't an option. Uh, yes, you can find me a YouTube video where a very skilled player picked it as a meme game, got lucky, high rolled and made the most outrageous board ever. But there's going to be a sea of a 10,000 other players who died horribly, who never could do anything with this quest because it kind of is horrible. Uh, Pilfered Lamps. You only need two copies of a card to make gold. Pretty amazing. Also incredibly hard to complete. It really depends on if you can complete this quest reasonably. More often than not, I feel like Pilfered Lamps is a trap. Pilfered Lamps belongs down in C tier because it's too hard to complete. It just never really works out. I'm not a huge fan of it. Hidden Treasure Vault. Hidden Treasure Vault is a great one. You complete this even relatively quick. You're going to be getting lots of gold and it's going to add up quickly and it gets really out of control as the game goes on. Because if you could complete this early, I mean, they've nerfed it recently, but if you can still complete this before turn seven, you're going to go nuts. If you complete this thing super fast, like turn four to five, because some heroes, you get lucky, you can cheese this. I'm going to put this as an A. Hidden Treasure Vault is usually relatively easy to complete, even after the nerf. Essence of Zerus is kind of the epitome of what I don't like. It's random when you complete it. It's usually relatively easy to complete. This is why people take it. But it's random, going to give you a random card. That's it was going to give you a Zerus that's going to shift every turn to a random reward. It's usually pretty easy to complete. So while I personally don't enjoy playing it, I have to take it more often than I like because it's usually pretty easy to complete due to the random BS of Ethereal Evidence. Ethereal Evidence is a tough one. I'm going to put it as a solid B. I feel like Ethereal Evidence definitely deserves mentioning and considering. Volatile Venom. I love this quest, but definitely Beast, Max, and Undead make Volatile Venom very good. I would make this S tier if it was completable. Now it does fall off towards the later game. Sinfall Medallion, not very exciting, but very consistent. Every time you play a card, it's going to give two cards from that Tavern tier, plus two, plus two, but you can top four pretty consistently. So for that, I'm going to give it a C. It's just not flashy enough to make it worth going any higher. You're not often going to win with it. And it's just kind of boring, but it is very consistent. Endless Blood Moon is very, very good. Endless Blood Moon is easily an A to me. It could be an S, depending if I knew I was going to go Quibble right off the bat. If you could start buffing, this is good generation. I like it. Enhancer Matic is going to give you a plus five, plus five spell. that could give you Taunt, Reborn, Divine Shield, and Wind Fury. You could complete this definitely a solid A because of the targeted nature that you can hang on to it if you can complete it early enough and feel comfortable. Definitely consider that. Kidnap Sack is a very, very good one also. Kidnap Sack is going to allow you to get a minion for free every turn, albeit from the shop or your side of the board. If you want to bring it back to your hand to cast a battle cry again, Kidnap Sack definitely worth looking at. Golden Hammer is great. It is very versatile. You could just go completely bonkers. I like it because it works in every lobby, but then it really works with Naga. I'm going to say it's S tier. Probably the first one I'll give it to because it's hands down making the minion you need gold every turn. That's hard to turn down. Boom Squad is Avenge 3, deals 10 damage to your opponent's highest health minion. The later in the game, the less useful this one is. But if you are playing a mech, a beast, an undead board, you're already kicking out a ton of minions. The more they die, the more you get to kill things. I feel like this is a lot like Volatile Venom in that it is very powerful the earlier you complete it and it does start to fall off. So I feel like this is a well-balanced and a solid, solid card worth taking. You just have to build around it when you see it. Invigorating Conk is very much a specific use card. So when you buy a minion, it's going to add stats to a random friendly minion. Uh, I'm going to put this it has just a C, you know, I know you might be like, but it sounds cool and it does. If you can buff the shot a lot, Invigorating Conk for me is probably a C tier. Uh, if you're playing a hero like Vol'jin, it is easily A tier because you can just take your highest statted minion, put those stats on a minion in the shop you want, then you buy that minion and now you have those stats again. So with him, S tier, easily. Conk, probably a steady C, not exciting. 
Timeline Accelerant, if you can complete this one, is very solid. It's going to give you two spells that you can target the shop that are going to raise those cards to one random card of a tavern tier higher. You complete this thing usually around tier four, make a six. Right off the bat, good value, very good card. I really like this one a lot. It's usually not insane to complete. I think Timeline Acceleration is definitely worth your time. Icicle. Now, Icicle, I am going to qualify this probably has a C. If you're playing mechs, I think it jumped right up to an A. But in a normal shop, it's a little tough. Basically, you're just buffing pairs to set up triples. But otherwise, it's not too exciting. So I'm going to put it as a C. Gilnay and Warhorn, I expect this card to be balanced in the near future. It is very, very good. It is going to make your battle cries trigger twice, just like you had a brand to give you a random battle cry that which you'll know what it is when the quest starts but it's a big big value those battle cries without having to have brand on the board is huge going off twice so i mean i have to put ghanaian warhorde up in s at least until they adjust it turbulent tombs this one is nasty complete it you get a random death rattle they'll tell you what you are once again but then your death rattles trigger twice Turbulent Tomes or Tombs is good forever. You keep that card on your board, you're getting that trigger forever. I've played this a couple of times. I think every time I played it, I got a selfless hero and I didn't care because I tripled it and it was always kicking out four divine shields a turn. Great value. This thing is bonkers. You don't have to have a Titus on your board. You don't need the one seven eating up a slot. Your death rattles are triggering extra times. Huge value, great card. I expect this to be adjusted, even if it's just making it very hard to complete. But right now, at least, S tier, always take this, go nuts. Sturdy Shard, I like this card. What it's going to do is it's going to buff your non-taunt cards, plus one, plus two, for each taunt minion you have. It's not flashy, it's not insane, but it's a solid B. Evil Twin, I love this one. Evil Twin is gonna take your highest health minion and give you a free copy of it every turn. This is a very good quest if it's even remotely completable, easily A tier to me. Doppelganger's Locket, let's talk about this one. It's usually not super hard to complete. It is going to give you a plain copy with all the enchantments of a minion from your opponent's board. You get to discover. That's very, very solid, easily A tier. Uh, maybe even S, but I don't want to put it up there with Warhorn and Tome. It could be with Hammer, but eh, you know what? I'm going to put this at S. This is basically one you're always taking, to, unless one of the other ones are situationally better. It gets better the later the game goes. It's not terribly useful in the early game, but it's still pretty good. Next up, Soul Pack. Soul Pack is whenever you buy a minion, it's going to give all the minions on your board and in the shop of that type plus one, plus one, and it's a cumulative. I mean, I'm going to put this at C. It's not exciting. It's consistent, but it's also not big and flashy and going to win you many fights. Divine Armor, give plus six, plus six, and Divine Shield to the leftmost minion in your hand during combat. It's still relatively easy to do. It's a pretty good situational buff. I'm gonna put it as a C. This is a preference thing. I think most people would probably rank it higher. I'm just not excited about it. Next up is Map of the Unknown. I was really hyped about this one because it's kind of a theater thing, uh, but in the end, it doesn't really work out the way you like hoped it would. I feel like it's often too slow. It's hard to complete. The reward's not great. Well, it's not a D. It is definitely pretty low into the Cs for me. I. I liked this one in theory a lot, and it just never worked out. Uh, next is Blood Soaked Tome. If you can complete this one, this is a must have for most heroes. Uh, it makes your minions cost two gold. Blood Soaked Tome is awesome. Definitely putting it up at S. It's fantastic if you can complete this. Scepter of Guidance. Every time you roll, you're going to be offered two minions of the, a type that's listed on it. I like this a lot in that it gives you direction. Not bad, not exciting, consistent. I'm gonna put it as C because it's not flashy and it's not gonna win you a game, but it's gonna give you the minions that can help you win the game. So I kind of like it for that. Ritual Daggers next. Ritual Dagger is give plus four, plus four. Pretty good. Not the powerhouse it used to be, but definitely with the right tribes, you can go pretty well. I'm gonna say it's very consistent and, and put that down in C also. Parasol, 
Folks, I just don't take this one anymore. The guitar's parasol gives plus eight health to your rightmost minion. Now, I honestly, I have to put this at D because this is just not a time I want to take this right now. Smoking gun, plus three attack to your minions. All of them, tokens, minions, everything. Hey, it's the old death one. Hero power, very consistent, very good. If the que other quests are not flashy, go tokens, go nuts, win solid B for me, definitely. Mirror shield, plus four, plus four, and divine shield to random minions when you refresh the shop. Once again, not exciting. And a random, certainly can win you games, but more often than not, while it's not a D tier, it's one of those I'm just not excited about. In Secret Sinstone, a good one to finish with. Secret Sinstone is going to give you two copies of any card you discover. A solid A, for me at least. I mean, you know, these are my opinions, folks. These are the ones I like. This is where I think they should be. And once again, lobbies, different tribes, different heroes, they're all going to influence my decisions. I think Gilnean Warhorn and Tur uh, Turbulent Tombs will be nerfed in so much that I think they'll stay the same, but I think they're going to be very hard to complete. And they should be. They're super good, especially Turbulent Tombs. A lot of these are in very good shape. I feel like they're pretty balanced. Some of the newer ones definitely need to be looked at and they're not really rushing towards that. They're probably gonna be with us for the duration of this quest meta till next month when we get whatever the new thing is. But for now, this is what I think. What do you think? Are you, do you find any of these silly? Like, oh no, 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 this mirror shield should be A tier, heretic, you're stupid. And why is doppelgangers lock it up there? Like, what is your take on these? What is your favorite quest? What is the quest you hate the most? Mine is definitely Menagerie of Mayhem that I hate. I've hated it since the beginning. I've just never liked it. Uh, plus one attack to a minion of each type. Meh, not something I wanna do. If I was gonna just say which one I think is the most fun, probably Wisdom Ball or Volatile Venom. It's kind of a tie for me because I like them both. But once again, it depends what you can complete. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. I'll catch you next time. Until then, see you on the battlegrounds. Later.